This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. Well, hello, everybody. Good journey to all of you. It is Dan Zare from Coffee with Kenobi. We are at the end of a very long and wonderful day, too, on the Galactic Star Cruiser, the Halcyon. I'm here with several of our dear friends. We've got David Motters, Marion Chas Perdue, Tom Gross, Corey Club. I think Terry King's going to be swinging by a little bit later. We're going to talk about our experiences. We had uh, breakfast. We had Batu. We had a lot of missions and a spectacular finale. And I think it's fair to say, look, if you didn't get a chance to book this thing, unfortunately, there is no more open cruises because, as we know, September 28th to 30th is the last day. We're going to talk about that, but we're going to be spoiling some things. So if you're planning on going on the cruise later and you want to go in fresh, then I would suggest that you pause this. We'll wait for you and come back. But if you're not going to get a chance to be a guest on the Halcyon, then tune in because we've got some great stuff tom let's start with you uh we can kind of break it through uh, however but maybe point out some highlights uh good things about batu the food the finale anything or uh, it, also is it fair for you to finally announce your allegiances although i think you kind of alluded to it already remember this is the thank you yes uh, so let's just get let's just cut to the chase uh i chose to align myself with the uh, first order um, I, I let me let me ex- let me explain to you why I went ahead and did that uh, my thinking was I wanted to do something that challenged me and would go against what I would normally do I did not want to play Tom Gross playing a Jedi or a resistance fighter so I decided to go out of my comfort zone and try to go bad guy and um, I felt like I did a pretty decent job. I, I broke out of character a lot, but when I was in character, I stuck to my guns. Uh, maybe not my literally, but my stormtroopers, they stuck to their guns. And, uh, and we, had, we had a ton of fun. Dave Motters and I and Chaz, we all were a first order, and uh, we, had some good, we had some good times. Um, so, Batu, my second time in Batu. The fir- That's right, and uh, and w- I guess one thing I will say about this this experience is being in Disney World. I felt like it was larger, just like just like everything, but it felt you know more expansive. Um, I, I didn't feel like it was any better or worse. It that just the note is that it it's just a, a wider alleys, things like that. Um, it was a ton of fun to scan the crates and collect things my, my favorite one Corey, is when <laughs> you uh you said i just collected a porg <laughs> and so i was like okay well i gotta get the porg and so i walked over and i collected a porg and my stuffed animal porg yeah yeah it was a ton of fun um but just moving around there got a chance to eat at docking bay 27 i believe just seven docking bay seven had the the ribs and those were delicious at your request or not request but your recommendation Dan um, I don't remember what if there's anything else you just want to stick to bat too uh, for now, sure. yeah go. okay where do we want to go where do I toss the ball all right so I'm gonna to toss it over to Corey hello Corey <laughs> hello I'm eating my tuba chips right now the sublight <laughs> round <laughs> tuba tuber tuber chips. Um, they're highly recommended. Delicious sauce. Um, yeah, this is a criminal full day, day two of the Galactic Star Cruiser. And being part of the Alliance, um, the, well, the Resistance, I should say. Not the Alliance. I got that mixed up. Um, but it's been a, a, a fun, p- packed day full of exploration I want to say the immersiveness even went deeper today because I felt like the travel to from the ship down to the planet, I mean, it, it was all there. I, I thought, well, how are they going to do this? How are they, they going to They'll break it somewhere? Something will happen where, you know, you'll feel like you're always, oh, we're, we're not in necessarily in this world anymore. Nope. The entire time, we're getting messages. Uh, we're chilling back and forth. 
Um, it's just it's so totally immersive that way. You can be in character. You can do as much as little as you can still. You know, be a part of everything. I still feel like I did as much as I wanted. Like I I tried to do everything, but you know, I felt like it was fantastic. We got to do all the things on the uh, Batu, uh, fly the Falcon. Uh, we did the Rise of Resistance together, and man, I don't know. It's just like it all comes together too. I feel like those pieces you do on Batu do feed up into the storyline that we follow on the trip on the ship itself. So that was a brand new experience for me to do that and go, oh yeah, these are some pieces of the puzzle that work together. So not only is it just a throwaway storyline or throwaway characters or missions, it all has to do to get go together and you're a part of it. Well said. The the cool thing about this experience for me compared to previous uh, journey on the Halcyon is I was even more sub submerged into the immersiveness of it. I did so many more missions on that too than I ever would have before. A lot of it prompted by my son Mason who is, you know, in a way sort of the target audience for this because he's he likes games, he likes analyzing things, he just likes having fun and doing adventures. And he kept saying to me, Dad, this is so much fun. Now keep in mind, we're in Florida. It's the middle of June or early June, and it was so yeah. hot. There are three suns. Like, yeah, there are three suns on Batu. No kidding, because the humidity was unbelievable. But it didn't affect him one way, and it was just fun watching it through his eyes, and all the things you could analyze and scan and all those puzzles. Last time, for some reason, I didn't, I didn't get it, and I think part of me was like, didn't really worry about it because I didn't think it was crucial. It is crucial. So Andrew showed me, hey, this it's just a puzzle. you got to fit the pieces in. I'm like, oh, oh. And then Mason's like, Dad, he does it right away. I'm like, well, let me try it, buddy. I think you can like do things where you hack into the different transmissions. It was a blast. I was completely enraptured with it. Rise of Resistance and the Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run have more cost to them because you actually feel like it's going to have an impact. And just going around and experiencing it. Some people are like, are you really going to spend the whole day on Bat 2? Yeah. With all those missions, in fact, we left before I even felt like I was done doing everything that I could have done. Of course, we had to stop and dock on ours, and it was fun to go in there with you, Tom, because you'd never been there before. And, you know, there may or may not have been another Legacy lightsaber purchased. I think Mary and I are competing for being yes, we are. the biggest yeah, yeah. bozos when it comes to that. Hey, and we'll wear it like a badge, won't yeah, absolutely. we? And it was just, it was so spectacular. Every part about it was so fun. I just was very much in that moment, and you really do forget about anything. You're just enjoying the Star Wars experience. Yeah, uh, Dave Motter's here. I um, uh, The trip to Batu, and you know, I, I just kind of want to echo what, you know, Tom said and, and Corey and, and Dan, that I've done Batu before. I've done Galaxy's Edge before. I've uh, been very fortunate to do that. I was talking to Chaz about this as well. In fact, we were crossing paths as we were going through Batu, the whole CWK crew, and how we were just crossing. I just saw all these CWK people throughout. We took over Galaxy's Edge, Batu East. And um, it's, it's just like Dan said that um, I've done these scans. I've walked throughout the whole places. I've hacked different things. But... I get now what you said. The level of immersiveness that the Disney Imagineers wanted this to be. I get it now. And, and it, it is staggering. Um, I see now how you can enjoy just Galaxy's Edge itself. But now with this added on, it has brought a richness that is just, it's staggering. I mean, literally the word staggering. Um, Dan mentioned a, a second ago, uh, you know, how much do you want to do? How much do you not want to do? When I crossed paths with Chaz, um, we're right by the milk stand. I'm looking at the Thai echelon, and and Chaz is just crushing, like virtually every like different mission you can do, side mission you can do. It's awesome, and um, and and just like Dan said, and 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 Corey and Tom did. But you can do as much as you want to do or not, but not just on Bat 2, but up here. I say up here at, on the Star Cruiser. And I never felt um, overwhelmed or felt like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. But uh, 
I just, I loved it. And I looked around and I saw people dressed in different levels. How much do you want to do it? How much do you not want to do it? Um, I've got my best friend on this, uh, on this uh, trip and he did as much as he wanted to. Uh, he's playing Sabak after 12 midnight with Mason and Terry. <laughs> They're over there right now. <laughs> so he's pretty into it. So um, I just, I cannot believe how awesome this was. But uh, the excursion to Batu, that went up so many levels for me after already doing it. And so just so impressed with, with, with this whole experience. And so thankful I'm here. Uh, with all these uh, CWK brothers and sisters. So I'll pass it over to Mary. Hi, it's Mary Perdue. Um, can I just say ditto to all the above? <laughs> I'm not sure I can add anything. Um, but, you know, Chaz and I have been annual pass holders for a lot of years, <laughs> a lot of years. And and we just recently moved to Orlando. And so, you know, we can kind of come over and do whatever we want at just about any time. Um, and we've been coming to Batu and, and Galaxy's Edge, you know, Batu East, as everybody calls it, as far as differentiating between Disney World and Disneyland, since it opened. And um, this was the first time that we had actually done the missions and played with the Play Disney app. And, and and we separated. Like, you know, he went his way and I went my way and he was following his path and I was following my path and, and I had a little issue with my data, a lot of issues with my data pad and thanks to Dan, I knew to go to a cast uh, crew member and get that situation uh, figured out. And once I did, that just enhanced the experience a thousand percent. And oh, Steve just want. Oh man, <laughs> Steve just beat Mason's air and back. Oh my God, but um, oh, it goodness. it it really made for a great experience. And Ed, like David said, we all passed each other so many times. We got together, stopped here, stopped in the shade, talked about this, compared this. Um, uh, um, Smuggler's Run was down all morning and Chaz and I just happened to be over there when it came up and I'm like texting the guy saying hey Smuggler's Run is going you know it just got back up and and so we were you know, everybody hopefully that wanted to ride it was able to ride it and, and it was just a lot of fun again to be able to do this with our friends even though we were separated a lot of the day even through the, the whole time that we've been on here, we were separated a lot of times, but we were still together. And, and so the 95 degree, three blazing suns on Batu East, as hot as it was, as much as we were doing, I don't think we really thought about how hot it was because we were all so immersed on what we were doing and what we felt like we needed to do and that We've got to get that next mission done that it just made the morning and early afternoon just fly by. And what and then topping it all off was all getting together at Ogus Cantina and just having a great time. Again, sort of separate but together, but just having a great time together. I'm Chaz Perdue. Um, also ditto really hard to add anything else um like david said i was crushing the uh quests left and right <laughs> i i finished the halcyon missions almost immediately and then noticed the credit symbol on the map and just immediately started taking on different missions for the first order for the uh resistance for the people uh people of Batu and even the smugglers for like Hondo um, and I was collecting items that I didn't even know I could collect by scanning all the uh, crates completing the missions I got Praetorian guard armor for just getting schematics for a random smuggler um, <laughs> and well done, well done. Well done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Is that possible? Apparently. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 
The man is on a roll tonight. Come on, Mason. Got a little dance on there. Oh, oh, you're going to get the shark. Yeah, yeah. But um, also like David said, we we passed each other by the milk stand. We also realized we had the exact same mission for the first order of taking this uh, symbol to Oga's Cantina and saying a, a phrase to get special information. And probably the funniest part of the day is when we did that, all of the bartenders just started screaming at each other, talking about how they're on the secret mission and stop talking about the secret mission. And it was just. It was so much fun, and it just, it really did feel very immersive, of the whole thing. And then, my last little thing to add on, and it, uh, what we were talking about with how they were going to do between uh, the Halcyon and Galaxy's Edge, it, I also thought there was going to be a break in immersion somewhere, but no, it's, you, you get off the ship, you get on a transport, you, you get off the transport, you're at a port. The, the, it actually feels like you got on an airplane and flew to another airport, essentially. Mm-hmm. It, the whole thing was great. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. See, my favorite thing about this is that everyone said, oh, I don't know if I can add any more to this. But you all did. You all did because there, this is, there's, everything is personalized on the Halcyon. Because we all have different choices that we make, different ways we handle them. Even like some of the things, even when you're aligning with the First Order or the Resistance or whatever, there's still multiple ways to answer for the same side. And it does make an actual impact. And this isn't like, even after I did it, I thought, well, they might be over-exaggerating that impact. They're not. They're absolutely not. And it's great. And I want to say for the record, because he's going to want me to, Mason, well, actually, he probably wouldn't care, but Mason told me earlier today, Dad, I love seeing other people win in Sabah because I like seeing them happy. So let's, let's switch gears now. Let's talk about, I don't want to talk about the ending of this. Well, we can just come on here. Let's talk about the missions and the finale and just sort of as we're wrapping up the night, sort of overall things, the impact that it had on you. And then afterwards, I'm going to ask you a pretty big question that I'm curious to hear the answer to. So the, I think we've mentioned that the immersion becomes pretty intense as the second day uh, goes along. And once dinner hits, right before and right after dinner, it becomes pretty, pretty serious. And it was serious but in a fun sort of you know in a fun sort of way of course but it is one spot to the next spot to the next spot and they you are you are feel like you are in a rush to complete missions before somebody else can do it and I have to say my favorite was as being a part of the first order we go down to the engine room with uh, Lieutenant Croy and the, the First Order sympathizers on the Halcyon are a pretty small group. Let me tell you, 15, 14 people. And we got, we got individual attention from the lieutenant, sometimes at a very loud level, about three, four inches from your nose. And other times he's being very charismatic and keeping you going. But... We got to do some teamwork down there to, to make things work. and to, Well, actually, <laughs> opposite. We got to work together to shut things down is what we did. And then, um, and then we ran up to the bridge and did some things there. And, and then it was kind of game on where everyone just sort of starts showing up in the atrium. And I, I have to say, the highlight for me of the night was, of course, there's a big fight. And we'll probably all have a highlight from that. So I, I won't talk about the whole thing but the part that i found to be the coolest is can i say who the fight was between we already established spoilers so so ray and supreme leader kylo supreme leader kylo ren and this resistance girl named ray end up battling up above us on a balcony and it is really intense but the part that really caught my eye and and everyone in the crowd was like whoa 
Kylo Ren, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, uses the Force and pulls Rey across, and, and, and like she floats, she floats over to him, and it was such a cool moment. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. But, um, but that was a big highlight for me, and just, gosh, what a great way to wrap the story um, and I'll let someone else talk about that, probably, what happens in that story. Sure, yeah. I, I think you're talking about the immersion. It's just like day one, you're kind of getting your bearings, understanding your data pad, you know, getting to see your room. You're kind of blown away by the aesthetics and everything. You get to know some of the storylines, the characters and such. You're like, okay, how's this all going to connect? You start, like, leaning towards one side or the other and making sure that, you know, you're answering questions correctly, getting all the missions done. But day two is like, okay, now that we're upping the ante, we got some heroes of the galaxy that show up. Uh, you know, you're following them around. You're literally following them around and doing stuff. Uh, for me, it was Chewbacca. We were doing uh, missions for him. It was also um, Sammy was another part of it, too. He was a big part of this, this storyline. But it was, I liked it so much because, like, you're not only just seeing them up, like you say, up in the balcony doing things, but, like, they're in the crowds. They're shaking your hand. They're slapping your back. You're doing a good job. You're like, they're right in the mix with you. And that's something like, you know, it's like you walked into a movie and now you're part of it. So you're, they're counting on you to do a good job or, you know, be work as a team. And that's the part of it to me was really awesome that like now these heroes of the galaxy we've all read about are just with us, working with us. And it's so much fun to do that. The part of the finale that I liked the best was that you shouldn't know what's going to happen. You thought all was lost. But then, no, someone else would win something. And then it would kind of go back and forth, teeter back and forth. And then, you know, um, there was a moment where, I don't, I guess I won't give too much away, but like, okay, so there's a moment where, you know, you're looking back and forth up the balcony with the action there, down to the crowd, and in comes the resistance fighter posed as, as a stormtrooper. Sammy whip, whips off his helmet, did not see that coming. He was a true hero. And he was trying, the whole thing, the storyline was, the fact that he was trying to, you know, do a good job and, like, make sure that he was, like, becoming a resistance hero. He wanted that moment, you know, and he got his moment. And just you could just see that through line from seeing him up on the bridge for the first time, kind of cowardly, yet all the way to the end, he's holding a blaster in a stormtrooper's face. <laughs> and it was it was super intense, super cool. And I think he was the kind of the hero of the story based on the, the Starliner itself. The um, yeah, th there's the thing. I was so excited to see all of you experience that. Uh, the finale is it's um, it's stunt work, it's choreography, it's lighting, it's visual effects, it's music, it's timing, it's precision. It's another level. Like I've heard people who work in theater have just talked about the incredible nature of this. And when Ray is dragged across, just like she is in the Last Jedi. The first time I saw it, people erupted. People cried. And the same reaction was tonight. Because it takes your breath away. It's just so unexpected. And their performances are just second to none. The, the missions today for me were great because you get back and there's all these things to do that were completely changing because of what you did on Bat 2. And what's cool is that sometimes, well, Tom did his thing with the First Order. Corey aligned with the Resistance. I aligned with the Jedi and the Force. Mason and I had the same intent, right, to follow the path of Jedi. And even though we would sometimes do the same stuff, we sometimes would have different little side missions. So even when you're making the same choices, different things might happen depending on what's going on, the order you do things. It's just, it's really incredible. The replayability is like another level. And it was pretty neat. The first time I did it, I was on bridge training and it was supposed to be the captain on the bridge. And then that's when Kylo Ren showed up and we had to run out of bridge train of the bridge when Kylo Ren was there. And it was super like, I felt like I was in trouble. Like I was marching along really carefully. And then this one, it was different because I had bridge training at a different time. So you're going to have different stories that are wrapped around the same thing. And that just blows my mind. Wait, you guys actually saw, like he was on the ship when you were on the bridge? Like yeah, like I saw we saw his ship pulling up. Yeah, and then I was like, "What? Oh no!" And I remember looking, and Mason looked at you like, "Oh no, Kylo Ren is here." 
because I didn't expect to see him because I, I, you know, there were no promos like that, and this one was a little bit different. When? I, okay, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep interrupting oh, here, but yeah. when? When did the when did you as the resistance know that your legendary heroes are going to be there? Because we didn't know Kylo Ren was coming until we were on the bridge. Mm -hmm. So when did you guys know that your legendary heroes are going to be there? So I had no clue. I mean, I, so the first time I had no clue, and Chewbacca kept walking out. I was like, "Well, that's awesome." There's Chewbacca, you know. And then I you, you heard rumblings about like someone says, "Is Ray here? Is Ray here?" But I had no Ray was going to show up. And all of a sudden, she showed up on the bridge during the big finale. Whereas with this one, I kept, we were supposed to be one of the people that helped her move around, sneak around. But here's the big thing. Usually when you have a side mission, you go, you scan the door, you come right in, you do your thing, and you go on to the next mission or whatever you're going to do. Go back to your room, relax for a minute, whatever you're going to do. But this one, we were supposed to be in a lightsaber training pod, and there was a person waiting with like um an electronic device and they said uh give me let me have your name so i had to give my name and they said okay just wait here so you know there's something special that's going to happen right and i had known that there was something really cool with ray at the end but i never experienced it and i thought i've got to do it so it's really important to align with the force for me so we walk in there and it's where you train with the lightsabers and terry was there with me too as was Corey, as was mary as was chaz as of course was mason Oh, you weren't there? No, not with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, one. Well, Did I say you? Oh, okay. Well, so then you walk in and everybody sits on the opposite sides of the room. There's this massive crate in the middle. And you saw at the end Ray holding that holocron. That was it. So they talked. she talked a lot to us about the Force and uniting and believing in ourselves. Like really good messages that transcend any fictional story, right? But those stories, as we know, those myths relate to us because... We're the ones who tell these stories. We want these ideas and motifs to last. And so then she opens it up. This hologram shows up that I don't know how it happened. And it, whether you're behind Yoda or in front, he was facing you, no matter what. And it was Frank Oz as Yoda, and he talked for a while. And it was it was so stunning. Like, I had tears in my eyes. And, it was, and he talked for a couple of minutes. And I thought, this is the gold. This is what I wanted to see. Now, the first time I was on the ship, I didn't know that happened until I was off of it. And someone said to me, would you, if you only did this once, would you feel cheated if you didn't get to experience that? And my honest answer was, no, I think it's cool that there's so many options for so many people. You can't have the same experience all the time. That completely, that was worth it, man. Andrew Harrison was talking, Andrew was in there too. He's talking about that, that was worth the experience. Then Ray talked to uh, SK620. And then they, well, they had to sneak us out one at a time. And that's another thing that's really fun about these missions. Like, it's so great seeing people, like, trying to have an inconspicuous face. But they always look like they're trying not to smell a fart as they walk through the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's kind of that's how it looked. And it's, it's so much fun to see that experience. And it just, because people were really into it. You're, like, really living in that moment. But honestly, on a personal note, I, I believe that... Heaven is a place where you're just very happy and you're surrounded by people that you love. And us all going out there, getting our pictures together, seeing each other throughout this experience on the, either Halcyon or on Batu, seeing Mason so happy and her being, being so kind with him, and spending all this with all of you. I mean, this is what heaven is going to be like. I mean, honestly, it's I couldn't think of a more magical group of people to spend it with or a more amazing experience than with all of you. And I'm so, so grateful that this happened truly truly am it was absolutely phenomenal we took a bunch of fun pictures tom mccord and i did a bunch of fun little glamour shots uh our lightsaber glamour shot. it was just it was just the absolute absolute best so i i have to follow you on that i mean i that's a that, wow <laughs> no um you know, when, when we when we talk about, like you said, missions and, and things like this, I really enjoyed the, uh, uh, Mary said this, doing things together, being at Oga's Cantina, doing lightsaber training together, but then you realize all the different paths we took and just did it. I didn't know what Tom was gonna do. We ended up doing the same things. Um, 
Corey's resistance, right? And uh, Dan, you're doing Jedi and all this stuff. And so to, to realize how this story plays out and how intricate it is, Dan, something you say a lot on the podcast, is this a story that needs to be told? Well, after experiencing it, oh, this is a great story. And I think part of what I was thinking about is like, you know, would, would you come back and do this again? We've heard about people on this cruise that have done five times and have more scheduled. And now I know why. Because you can do so many things. Like when I think about what you experienced, uh, Dan, with Yoda and Ray, I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what Tom and I experienced was incredible down there. It was just great. And like you, you see these people and you're interacting with them and they're like Tom said, five feet in your face and you're, you're, you're in a movie set like Corey said, you're part of this story and it's mind blowing. Um, I enjoyed side missions. Um, I enjoyed the overarching story beyond belief, but uh, yeah, this is incredible. Now I'll say this, during the, the, the whole final thing, like I was in tears when when, when Yoda shows up and, and I start to tear up. And, 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 and I started off taking pictures at the very beginning yesterday of the crew members, but I started taking pictures of Dan and Corey and Tom and everybody I could see. I took a picture of Steve with SK. He loves SK 620, why? He's Steve Klink, SK, you know. <laughs> this, is his, this is his favorite droid, okay? SK, everywhere. So I'd always get a picture of SK with SK. Um, but a picture of Dan looking up. Thank you oh, for joining us. There we are. Um, and so, um, oh, it's 12.30. I thought we were going to two. Oh, wow. Okay, that was an interruption. But, but I started taking pictures and just, I got Corey over there. I got Steve behind the First Order Trooper. Um, and just seeing the joy on everybody's face. You know, so instead of taking a picture of, of Lenka Mock or other stormtroopers, I'm taking it of the CWK family and uh, and just seeing the joy in your face. And that is heaven. It really is heaven. And so I'm so glad we did it. I'm so glad I'm a part of it. And uh, once more, I'll hand it over to my sister in the force. Thank you, David. Um, I will say that the finale was amazing. And I was one of those people who did sort of sit and watch other people's videos that they posted, you know, because who knew whether or not we were ever going to get to do it. And, and, and so I have, of course, people did not post everything. And like the Yoda experience with the Jedi archives, I never got a wind of that at all. Had no idea that's what we were going into when we went in and did that. That was amazing. Um, so knowing some of what was going to go on with the finale, like I knew Sammy was going to come out as a stormtrooper, and and you know, and I knew about the 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 lightsaber that actually extends out, and then she drops it and picks up the other one to fight with, and I knew about the force pull. I had seen the videos of that. I had seen videos of people doing some of the missions around the ship. I had seen videos of the ship. But to say that I had seen the videos means absolutely nothing. Because when you are here and you are experiencing it, those videos are like watching a really bad TV show. And then you get to be immersed in it. And that was what the amazing part was, was being able to be immersed in it. And, and sort of knowing what was going on but not really knowing what was truly going on and being surprised by that that was the fun part and being with everybody and watching everybody else's reactions like david said it was fun to watch other people's reactions to different things that were going on that was that was a lot of fun so with the freedom to choose is one of the best things on it, on what quest you want to do. So I did the only logical thing, and I did all of them. I did resistance. I did for. I might as well have with the speed that I was doing it. Uh, I, I started off kind of doing resistance, and then it, I kind of was like, I'll do first order too. Kind of switch sides, and then I got 
missions for uh, Wraith, a uh, guy as manager, uh, and then I was getting the Jedi mission, so I just kind of started doing everything to just see, like, what the different storylines could be and just what I could build up to and, um, like, what my mom, uh, Dan, Corey, and uh, Terry got to do. I did the uh, uh, Saja holocron uh, where Ray opens the holocron and Yoda talks. I got to do that because of the Jedi storyline I did. And then I got to be on the bridge for uh, the First Order with uh, David and Tom, uh, which was great. Also, just Lieutenant Corey was one of the best parts of the entire cruise. Um, so just being able to choose your own personal storyline is great. Um, as for the finale, it's nothing crazy that my favorite part was, but I just really liked how they did Kylo moving the chandelier and then it just kind of falls and hangs the rest of the time. And now it's still even hanging outside right now. Like they just leave it like just the way they did that and just how it looks like an actual broken, like fixture still is just really shows how much work they put in for the immersion. So Terry has just gotten uh, done. Uh, Terry and Steve were playing Sabak with Mason. H how did that go, by the way? Well, um, I, I, I learned a few things about Mason here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I learned a few things here. Um, for, for one, when it comes to Sabak, he does not make mistakes, <laughs> e even though it appears that he admits to making mistakes here. Um, I, I, I don't know if, if I can say I'm proud to say this, but I actually won uh, two games against him. So, and he taught me well because I really did not know how to play the game before playing him. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't know if that will ever happen again because I think he's going to bring his A++ game next time uh, uh, for that. Talk about um, your reactions to the day and the finale and how the experience for you overall on the second day. Okay. Well, my experience is for, from yesterday, from today. Um, when I entered this, uh, my character name was Ryder Nakai. Uh, it's just based off a, um, a, a play on uh, Terry King, of which I think 25 years ago when I started playing you know, computer video games, uh, there is a Star Wars lore of a language that if you take the first... Uh, uh, sorry, if you take the uh, the last two letters of every word and bring it to the, the first of the word, uh, Terry becomes writer and King becomes uh, Nakai. Uh, so I, when I came in with that character and that storyline here, um, I had ev everything after that when uh, things after we had our our first muster, uh, everything changed. Uh, after that, because the focus became a little bit less on me, and uh, I, I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, with you here. The, I, I enjoyed the finale. I enjoyed the theatrical effects. Um, my wife, she was watching me through the crowd, so she can see my reactions uh, of, of the finale. Let's um, uh, see here. She, uh, you know, so I could see the smile and the kind of smirk on her face. That you know, she knew I was pretty happy here. Um, and, and I know that this is supposed to be uh, my Star Wars story to, to kind of go in and, you know, just live in, you know, in universe uh, here to, to experience everything. But um, I, I don't know how to explain this, but uh, I really loved experiencing your guys' stories. And uh, just in interacting with every every one of you, and um, I ba basically I forgot I kind of forgot about my story about who I was, what I was trying to accomplish, and uh, I just started watching uh, everybody and, and how they were progressing and uh, the types of missions that they were uh, uh, going through, and um, and it it, I, it it again you know I'm I'm a, I'm a person that uh, that. It, loves to kind of sort of cling to the childhood memories of um, you know of being very green and in experience with life and uh, not having any limitations on your thoughts your emotions your feelings and uh, so that's why certain childhood events you know that feel good stick with me very well but wow this 
this event here that, that we did for the past two days, um, it, it would have been good with me and my wife. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I would have been satisfied here, but it, I, I mean, th th this this made it ten times better experiencing it with everybody else. Uh, because of course my wife is family, but I came in this meeting everybody, and you guys are my extended family. I I I, I, I love just just seeing every, uh, all of your accomplishments, uh, seeing your reactions to everything that was going on. And I, again, if I can, if there is some way that I can just express my emotions into words, um, I, I might be able to do that just a little bit clearer. But, but yeah, this is definitely one of those uh, types of things here that you can't really, you, you can't say that you know, for a certain dollar amount, this is what you need to expect out of it. Uh, you know, uh, I, I totally immersed myself in the, the best the best that I could, the best that my body would allow me to, and, and be able to keep up with all the kids. Um, and wow, the kids, the answers, the, the interactions that they had uh, with Ray and Chewbacca. Um, a, a, again, uh, you know, j j just being somebody who likes to kind of, you know, uh, revisit childhood memories and, and remember what it's like to be a kid. Seeing these kids having the same interactions that I had when I was a, a kid, uh, and and looking at them and listening to them and saying, "Hey, they're having." life events that they will always remember okay now, now um you know, right as of right now uh the, the star cruiser uh is going to be closing at the end of september but when the end, end of september comes around they're gonna they're gonna uh you know uh, have those experiences those experiences are going to stick with them for the rest of their life um i i'm watching firsthand the 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 uh, the the the, uh, the new generation of Star Wars fans uh, uh, coming up. I'm seeing that firsthand, and that that's that's such a satisfying uh, uh, fe feeling and, and, and experience just to see uh, what, what, what's going on. And I, I hope those kids continue to live out their dreams. I hope they, they take it uh, not to the next level, but take it as take it as, as, as best as they could to go as far as far as they can to kind of push the Star Wars universe uh, uh, and, and any new sagas any new uh, experiences uh, build on it and, and just, yeah, and just uh, you know just continue to, to do, do the stuff that's going to um, uh, uh, just further George Lucas's vision of uh, you know family fun and entertainment wow. hello what a beautiful what a beautiful summit we are. Well, let's just. Well, we'll wrap things up because that was really that was really nice. Appreciate all of your thoughts here. I have two questions. Um, we'll try to get through it quickly. Here we go. First question is, and this was a popular thing on the media cruise. A big a big question people will ask: Is this Star Wars enough? And if you had to modify something on this, what would you change? Oh, I figured that would come my way first. I guess I have been going first here. My, you know what? This is, the, okay. So, is this Star Wars enough? Heck yeah, it it totally is. I I I have felt like I've been living in Star Wars galaxy for the last two days, and. And you know, I, I've been sitting here thinking about like how how does something like this become so good? And the only thing I can come up with, and I mentioned this last last May when we were in Anaheim, standing outside the the Millennium Falcon, is this is all built and dreamed up by people that are like all of us sitting in the 1980s, maybe some of us late 1970s, watching Star Wars through the eyes of a seven, eight, nine, ten year old. And now we are here, the builders and creators of these stories. And that's, I, I just, that's how we get things like this from something being along around so long that the people who enjoyed it as children now are making it. So is it star Wars enough? Yeah. For me, it is totally star Wars enough. And would you, is there anything you would change? 
Um, I don't. I'm trying to think if there's anything I would change. I can't say that there's anything I would like during the experience. I don't know that there's anything I felt like I needed to change. Um, I guess. I guess you know I had so much fun on Batu. I almost wish there was a little bit more time there. Actually, what I really wanted to do was go there in the morning, do some missions, blah, 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 do all of that, fly back to the ship, get a rest, <laughs> and then fly back down. That's really what I wanted to do. But I, it, it, as like a core item of this experience, no. I, there's nothing I can really think of that I would change. It was, is, was it Star Wars enough? I mean next best thing would be in a Star Wars movie. That would be the next best thing. I mean, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but, you know, this is... If you're looking for an experience that's um, living your childhood dreams out, like Terry said, like, this is it. This is it. You you know, I think this is the pinnacle of Star Wars experience. What would I change? I'd change my cosplay. I didn't work on it a little bit more. I think I feel like I've up my ante. Um, but I want to, you know, if it ever happens again, uh, I'll be ready to go. Uh, excited to, to do it again and uh, be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Mason. Uh, Mason's there joining us. Mason uh, has, again, been playing Sabacc. Had a great time. He even had uh, the, the people working in the Sublight Lounge playing with him. Uh, is this entire experience Star Wars enough for you? And what would you change if you had to change something? Mm-hmm. This experience is 100% Star Wars because it feels like you're in a movie when Rey and Kylo are fighting. And then I would change is I would lower the price at that one or 2000 Okay. And would you be able to take the Sabacc table home? Yes. Would you want it in your room or in the basement? It'd have to be yes. in my room. it have to be in your room, I think so. <laughs> is this Star Wars enough? So I think that's a complicated question. I feel like I'm in Star Wars because of this experience. But to be honest, growing up, Star Wars to me is Darth Vader, is Luke Skywalker, is Han Solo, is Princess Leia, is R2-D2. You know, it's a lot of these things. Now, that isn't really on the ship. I mean, you get 3PO and R2 very, very briefly, but they're not there. That doesn't bother me completely because this is wonderful. And Star Wars is about family and friends and experiences. Uh, the mythology at the end is exquisite and amazing. But I, I would be disingenuous if I didn't say, look, if this was Darth Vader instead of Kylo Ren, or if it was classic Stormtroopers instead of the First Order Stormtroopers, and if Luke Skywalker and Han and Chewie showed up instead of Rey. I love Rey. I think Rey is one of my favorite characters, period, in any franchise. But for me, of my generation... It would absolutely up the ante for me. I've been on it twice, so it's not going to change my commitment to it. But it is something that I would absolutely consider. And if I could change it, then it would be throwing in, like, every couple of years, keeping it open, keeping this thing open, uh, evangelizing about how amazing it is, and changing the storyline every couple of years. I don't know how you do that. It's easy for me to say because I don't have to take out onto the planet. Those are things I would consider. And, again, that all being said, I think this is perfection, and I love it. Yeah, to piggyback on what you said, Dan, like, is it is it Star Wars? And I, I grew up on the original trilogy. I, you know, I'm a I'm a 1977, 80, and 83 kid. Um, so that that if if you could change it, yeah, I, I going through this experience now. Uh, you you asked if there's one thing we could change, and and it would be that it would be to not only do this to do it with Kylo and Ray and Chewie and. And the whole sequel trilogy crew here, uh, where this is based, if they could change it, that's what I would say is to be able to give us that type of experience, like an original trilogy of this. Um, but uh, an answer, you know, even being an orig- original trilogy um, uh, person, um, do I, is this Star Wars? Um, unbelievably, yes. And I, I want to. Uh, steal what Corey said. The the only way for this to be more Star Wars is, you know, if George is out here and directing us, and they got <laughs> lights and right, faster, and and more faster, more intense, and you're in it because you felt in it. And uh, so yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely in Star Wars uh, here on the Halcyon down at Bed Two, 
and uh, yeah, that would be the one thing to change uh, is to bring those classic characters back. But uh, uh, beyond that, um, I don't I don't know how you do that because of what these actors have to know and do. But I, you know what? I, I think they can do it. I, they, considering what I've seen, they could do that, and I would love it if they did. I'd love it if they did. And again, to my Star Wars Four sister. <laughs> Again, ditto. <laughs> um, yes, is it Star Wars enough? Yes, it's a hundred percent Star Wars enough. And this is coming from someone who was a young adult, an adult when the originals came out. And Star Wars was definitely the mythology of our generation. Would it be great if the original trilogy characters could be involved somehow? Absolutely. But as a Star Wars fan who really loves 99.9% .9 of what comes through from all the Star Wars shows, movies, animated shows, yes, it is 100% Star Wars while we're here and we're immersed and you just put your whole self into it. And you will get exactly out of it what you want to get out of it. Plus more if you're really open and your mind is open to what's here and what they're giving us. Um, and if I could do it again, I would. And I understand why there are that there is that handful of people that have come back and done it multiple times. And the announcement of the Star Cruiser closing was majorly traumatic to a number of people and now I sort of understood it but now I really understand it and yeah if we could come back and do it three or four more times I'd love it I'm like Mason drop it a few thousand dollars but how do you do that when you have the quality of the characters and the actors and the crew members and and this place I understand the price I understand the price I just wish there was a way that it could keep going. Yeah. So I'm not the youngest, nor am I the oldest here. Uh, I grew up on the Clone Wars and watching the prequel trilogy first. Uh, so what got me into Star Wars was the Jedi, the mythology, but also the overarching and the diverging storylines. So for me, this is very much Star Wars enough because it has exactly that. It's not only just Jedi and Sith, it is smugglers, it is the uh, First Order Stormtroopers, it is uh, the captain, the crew, um, dealing with uh, just everything. It just, it, it feels like what I've always wanted to feel like playing the old games, just getting fully immersed as your own character. Uh, something I would change though is this is just my own personal preference is I would like there to be like one or two more storylines mainly I would love a Sith one like because we have you can be First Order you can be Resistance you can be Smuggler and you can be Jedi but there's nothing for the Sith when that was still kind of a plot point in the sequel trilogy is the Sith so I feel like Having a story. True. True. Maybe not Sith, but maybe like an. Brought up something new that we right. didn't know, but guess what? Like, maybe not Sith, but maybe like a Knights of Ren. Something to deal with the dark side a bit more, aside from just the First Order. So that's all I would change. All righty here. Well, um, do I think this is Star Wars? I 100% do. I, I'll open up with that. Uh, and, and just, I, I'm totally ecstatic, happy, uh, exhausted, uh, everything that you can feel. Uh, that, that, you know, that, that's how, how I feel here on, on the last night uh, here. Um, I think after midnight, I can't remember the exact time, but I'm pretty sure it should be after uh well after midnight right now and and I and I still don't want it to end uh, here um, the um, wow it, it you know it 
I don't think I would change anything. You know, I, I really don't think I, I would change anything. I would, I would like to see one thing added uh, here is that uh, most of us has a, uh, a dominant path or had a dominant path that we chose, uh, along with maybe a couple other side paths uh, here as, as time and effort had allowed us uh, to do. Um, <clears throat> I, I think I kind of would have liked to see like maybe at the end when we had met uh, or did our final mission, the, the one that actually, uh, you know, confirmed our, our choices and, uh, um, you know, d d made us truly accepted by either the uh, uh, Saja or b by the, uh, the lieutenant or by Ray or whoever here. Um, I, I think I'd like to see maybe a, a, a moment, a physical memento that we could have taken home uh, to, to, to kind of remember that from later on, like either a pin uh, or um, in the um, uh, we're in the lightsaber training room here where we had seen the, the Saja and then seen Ray and then also seen Yoda at the end. Um, I think it would have been nice to have like maybe just a, a, either a, a, a fragment of a um, uh, try to think of the, the, the word in here. The, uh, the, the what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Either like an, yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, like like a memento or like a piece of artifact that we could uh, uh, that that would have been kind of not personalized to us specifically, but personalized to our path. And also, I think that would have been uh, a pretty neat thing to, to, to pass along for anybody who chose to be uh, a scoundrel or anybody who chose to be associated with the First Order. All right. So, wow, what a. This is great. This is I didn't know how much we would be able to fill, but we feel a lot. I think we could fill much more. But I think the uh, the cast members of the Sublight Lounge are ready to close up. I've been in here late plenty of times, so I've never seen the lights start to come on. So that's kind of interesting. So we will wrap up here. I'm sure we'll have a recap show after we've had a little bit of time to let the dust settle. But thanks again to everybody who's been a part of this. A big, big thank you to Emmy and Mouse Fan Travel and Becky Mankin and her team for helping to make this happen, fulfilling our Star Wars dreams and experiences. Thank you, Becky, so much. So excited to see what the future holds. This is the first Coffee with Kenobi and Mouse fan travel experience, travel experience, but it will not be the last. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is... <laughs> Good journey, friend of the Star Wars. Really driving hours, Galactic Star Cruiser parking lot. I'm here, of course, with Tom, Corey, and Mason. Gentlemen, what an incredible experience. Final thoughts as we head towards our planet and the real world. Well, when you look at it, it is <laughs> it is one amazing adventure. And it's, I feel like, I feel like what we were talking about beforehand or Dan you had kind of let us give us a heads up on and that is I feel like I, I was there for a week and that's not a bad thing <laughs> because we were so busy we had so much fun along the way I you know one thing I didn't mention in uh, a previous show was among some of the favorite things was the lightsaber training because it was all our friends <laughs> everyone in there was part of our group and it was just so much fun to watch everyone participating and laughing and having such a good time and I felt like the 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 Jedi leading it was feeding off of that energy and having so much fun but in reflection coming home I'm just so filled my cup is filled with Star Wars joy and I and I, I'm, I can't say that it would quite be the same if it wasn't with the three of you. So, what a wonderful, wonderful trip. Yeah, this is an experience I'll probably never forget in the sense of being a Star Wars fan and just being part of a community of fans themselves. Like, like we talked about the whole time, it's just like, that's what makes this experience is not only being on the starship, but like, being amongst fans, friends, and, and family, and being part of this whole thing together. 
Uh, that's what makes it more fulfilling. But like you said, it's it's bittersweet. You know, the fun comes to an end, but it it's it's a well satisfying conclusion. It's like a uh, I don't know a final dessert <laughs> after a long we- meal you've had, and and being able just to share it with friends and, and break bread, like Dan said earlier too. Just like that's what it's all about. I think that's what Star Wars has always been about: is community and fans and family and togetherness. And so this is like the pinnacle of that. Um, like I said, I'll never forget this experience. It'll go down in history of some of my probably my top experiences as a, being a Star Wars fan uh, forever. This is a definitely an unforgettable experience, and it makes you um, like the sequel trilogy a lot more. And I don't think they can abandon this building in any way. It was, I mean, this is a capstone moment. This is, it is better than Celebration Way because it's just more personal, more intimate. You have just concentrated time with people, not only the people that you come with, and you should definitely come with the people that you love, that you love spending time with, that you want to get to know better. But you get to know people on the ship, on the experience itself. There are plenty of people, families, kids that we talk to, and you just get, you just kind of have a little smile when you see them on the boat, and you feel a little sad when you get off. And I feel like nothing says it better than when we got off the Star Cruiser experience today. And I keep using the word ship or boat because it all just it kind of feels like you're on a vessel of some kind. And that's the point. When we got off the ship, I turned around and there was this, this woman there with her family. And she had tears in her eyes as they're playing this incredible John Williams score as you're getting off the, the shuttle, which is an elevator. And she just said, it's just so wonderful. And she had tears running down her face. I feel like that captures everything perfectly. I, I can't thank, you know, the three of you enough for just helping to make my experience what it was. Everybody on the Star Cruiser experience with us, Cato, Liberty, David, Terry, Mary, Chaz, who am I? For, am Andrew, I, Michelle. An, Andrew, Michelle, all of you. All of you made this so special. Christina, of course. And and Steve and oh my gosh, I, if I'm forgetting your name, I'm so sorry. I just I'm tired, <laughs> but blissfully tired. It was an amazing, amazing experience. We're driving home, uh, looking at the Skyliner as we head towards our future destinations. We of course will recap this more even later on CWK Pourover. Look, none of this is possible without all of you supporting Coffee with Kenobi and Becky Mankin, her amazing team at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. They really do truly give you the best travel experience. So many things happen because of them, and I'm convinced, as Tom alluded to earlier, in our lightsaber training, everybody in that lightsaber pod, that training experience, was from the Coffee with Kenobi Mouse Fan Travel trip, and I feel like Becky and her team had a hand in that. They just make the magical touches, the little things that you wouldn't necessarily think about, but they think in advance to make that special for you. And actually, you can go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel. Let them know that Coffee with Kenobi sent you because, to be honest, not only do you get the greatest vacation experience, but when you support Mouse Fan Travel, you support me and Coffee with Kenobi. Thank you again so much, everybody, for listening, for tuning in, for enjoying it, for liking, subscribing, following along on our adventures. Thank you so much for all you do. May the stars light your way. Thanks again. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.